this is where we're pouring today. We've got this jacked up camp. We're out down on the ocean. And they didn't even backfill for us. They left us left the site quite a mess actually. So there's no backfill. You see we gotta we gotta dump around all these pillars. They got all this mess in the way. There's a bunch of mud over there. Um Pouring underneath the camp isn't that big a deal, really. It's just all, they should have had this backfield for us. They got a couple of planks here for us to walk across. I mean, come on. This isn't something we normally do. But we're doing it today to get it done. They want to get this camp put back down tomorrow, so we'll get it poured today. It is a really nice spot, though, down here on the ocean. We're getting that truck back in right now. Get him through there. We'll have to pour through those little openings. And then at least the first truck anyway. Second truck we should be able to get over here where it's a little more open. But we'll get it poured. About 15, 15 and a half yards. We just like when we show up, we like we like the foundation to be backfilled. It's a lot safer. It's just a lot easier walking around. Less chance of getting injured. And that's what we like. I guess you can't have it perfect every single day in this business. So we'll start with him right there. Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. If you're new to my channel, it's all about concrete stuff. So if you like that stuff, please go ahead down and hit subscribe. In today's video, we're pouring underneath a jacked up house. Now this house, I was I didn't get to see it before they jacked it up, but we've done I don't know, we've done hundreds of these in the last 40 years like this where the people want to preserve the house and put a nice foundation under it because, well, maybe they got a really nice location like these people do. So they'll hire somebody to come in and jack the house up and then uh, the foundation crew will come in and put in a foundation and then they hire us to do the concrete floor. Now for us, the issue usually with doing a floor underneath a camp or a house like this is always the access because... You know, they got those big steel beams going through, and on the outside of the foundation, they got them. They got the beams cribbed up, so we got to work around the cribbing, and the beams are usually in the way. This one had some pretty nice holes. They, the reason they put those big bond outs in the foundation is to set, when they set the house back down, they'll be able to pull those steel beams out, and then what they'll do is they'll just fill those, they'll fill those gaps up with uh, concrete blocks and just uh, cement those in there with some water but for us i mean it's it's definitely always an access thing you're going to see here in a minute i'm going to show you the outside access and just how tough it can be now getting a pump for something like this would probably be ideal the trouble is right now the pump guys are so busy if you don't give them two or three weeks notice you don't get one they're just so busy and a lot of times on my jobs i don't have two or three weeks notice before I got to get here and get the floor done like I got I had about a week's notice on this one before I knew they were putting the house back down and when they put the house back down pull those beams out well my access is even worse then so I had to get this in one way or another luckily it wasn't huge the floor is not huge so it wasn't too bad the way we did it but check out the access right here I'm gonna I'm gonna show you here real quick all right, first truck's empty. We've got the second truck back in. You can see how not back filling. See how far away we got to keep him now. Shoot right over the wall. But it ain't too bad. It's a pretty small one, so. Yeah, we got that first one all down. Second one's coming. Tide's coming in. Water's up higher. Yeah, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, they didn't they didn't really leave us that great access. But we're making do with what we got so we can get it done. That's all that really matters is we get this done. Now, as you can see, this is right on the ocean, so it's a really nice spot actually. So preserving preserving the building and and actually improving the house is definitely a good thing. Um, the amount of money they're putting into this, I you know, I don't know exactly what it is to jack a house like this. Maybe if you do know, you, you know, put it down in the comments. 
but I'm, I'm, you know, with my experience being around these guys quite a bit, I know it's probably, it's probably twenty to thirty thousand to jack this thing and put it back down. Um, I may be way off base, but from you know guys I've talked to in the past, that's probably around where it was. And then to do a foundation like this, you know, I don't price foundations. My my specialty is flat work, but I work with these foundation guys all the time. You know, this this is probably a maybe like a fifteen thousand dollar foundation, and then of course you got the concrete floor, which is probably another. I don't know, three or four or five thousand right in that ballpark. And then you got all the all the excavation outside, you know, digging the hole, backfilling, probably doing a, a you know, connecting the septic and all that. So they're probably putting I don't know, I bet by the time they're done with all the permits and everything, they're probably putting a hundred thousand dollars in this thing to get it jacked up and put a foundation under it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments, but I'll see if I can find out and pin that to the top of the comments exactly what they did put into this and we'll see who's closer on the guessing so what I'm doing is I'm shooting my center pad right there getting my grades we got a chalk line on the outside that we shot with a laser so that's what we're magging our outside pads to and then we'll get this thing screeded flat we're just screening by hand today it just you know being where it wasn't that huge we're not using the power screed we'll just do it by hand we did put, because it's undercover today, we put some accelerator in it. So, you know, the concrete's gonna be setting up pretty fast, especially being on styrofoam. A lot of floors they that people do in Maine, the, the state code has them put styrofoam under it. So if you're wondering, you know, what they need the styrofoam for, that's basically it, because the state code says to put it under there. And then the local code enforcement guy is the one that enforces that. He can either, you know, if you talk to him and say, do I have to do this? And he's the one that's going to really enforce it. You can see how we screed there. We're just we, we're just kick screeding. Darren's on the inside. That's him over there on the left. Luke's on the outside of the pad. And then that's me raking the concrete. And then we usually switch. All three of us can do everything. So what we'll do today, we'll get this poured today. I'll show you how we pour this. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably, because the access, as you saw, there's no real good way to get a power trial in here with, for one guy, I'll probably have to leave both of them just, just for safety reasons, getting the power trial in. They'll have to carry it around and then drag it across those planks. And then, uh, I'll show you at the end, just what those planks are. Take a look at this little shoot trick we do. How many of you guys do this shoot trick? So we'll just take the, take the end shoot off when we're going over a wall like this and we'll turn it around the other way and it hooks right back on. And it just redirects the concrete so it cuts down on a lot of splatter, keeps the concrete from having to fall too high. And you can, it'll slide back and forth a little bit. I mean, you know, forwards and backwards a little bit so you can kind of direct the concrete around. It just makes it really easy pouring over a wall like that. You could pour footings like that too, I guess. I mean, we don't pour footings, but I don't see why you couldn't. Yeah, you can see how fast and easy that made pouring that last little piece. Now we're, now we're not jumping out over the wall right here because, I mean, there's no backfill on the outside of the wall. So we're going to work our way back to the, there's a walkout door over there to the right that you can't really see on the video. We're going to work our way back to that walkout door. And hopefully we got enough mud. By the time we get over there, we'll have to bucket some around. Screeding, you know, the screeding the way we screed is, uh, you know, it's difficult to learn the kick screeding like that, getting in sync with your partner. But it, once you get it down, it's pretty easy. And it, it's pretty fast. For three guys, it's pretty fast. We can screed, we can screed quite a bit of concrete in a sh relatively short amount of time, especially if you got a good raker. What you got to wait for is the Bofloat guy. <laughs> you can only go so far depending on how many Bofloat handles you have. So, And the access you have with the, with the walls being in the way. So let me know how you guys would have done this. Would you have pumped it? Would you have used a conveyor truck? Would you have just shot it over the wall with some chutes like us? What kind of 
Do you do even do floors inside foundations like this that aren't backfilled? But we do quite a few of them. We'll probably we'll do you know a dozen of these probably a year with the that might be jacked up. We used to do a lot more, but it seems like there's less and less of these, so you don't see as many of them. But this is generally how we do it. Now Darren's going to finish that off again. He's got to get that bolt loaded, or he won't be able to reach it. And then he'll finish screeding that off and head out the door. And then I'll show you real quick just the access what the access was right at the door. So take a look at that. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Like the video. If you guys like this kind of stuff, let me know. All right, so we got it in. Had plenty of concrete. This is our access right here. That's about six feet down. That's what they want us to step over to get in there to finish. So they did give us a couple planks though that we can set right on this uneven ground. So that was pretty nice of them, I thought. But we'll get it done. Dealing with the elements. Tide's coming way in now. Look at the difference. It's way up here now. It's probably gonna come in another. Well, it's gonna come in and cover that rock. That's probably another six feet high up there. Tide really comes in and out a lot here. It probably, probably changes 15 to 20 feet in depth easily. So we have really high and low tides here in Maine.